Hello, this is Mike at Game from Scratch, and welcome to the very first tutorial in our ongoing Hacks uh, and Hacks Flixel tutorial series. Uh, as the title tells you, we're going to be looking at making games using Hacks Flixel using the Hacks programming language. Now, Hacks Flixel is a port of the Flixel Flash based game library, uh, popular. It's been around for probably a decade now, and Hacks is also heavily inspired by Flash. It's a programming language that compiles down to various other languages. It can hit many targets and it's on many different platforms. Uh, so today what we're going to look at is getting your hacks environment up and running, including Hacks Flixel. And that's about it. So there's going to be no coding in this environment. If you already have Hacks and Hacks Flixel installed and configured, you can skip ahead to the next part in this series. But if you haven't, don't worry. This is actually a very straightforward process. And we're going to go through it step by step. Now, the very first thing you do is you're going to need Hacks. Uh, hacks itself is the programming language and um, all the various different tools we need here. And they're available at hacks.org. Uh, that's H-A-X-E dot O-R-G. And then just go ahead and click the download link. Now there's um, Windows, OS X, and Linux installers available. We're just gonna go ahead and do straight up Windows installer. Uh, for this version, we're doing 3.40. Uh, so if time's gone by and there's a newer version, go ahead and grab it. So just go ahead, very simple, small download. Download it and then run the uh, the installer and you will see welcome to hacks blah 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 go ahead click next and what we want to do is go ahead with the default install so we want the hacks 3.4 now there's another option on here called Nico Nico is a hacks runtime basically it's the um, hacks version of like the Java virtual machine it's a hacks virtual machine it's an environment for hacks code to run in you don't need to use this you can have your hacks compile just to uh, HTML or to um, C++ or various other languages, uh, but you've got nothing to lose by installing the Nico runtime as well. It's a fairly small install and it gives you a bit more flexibility. Uh, so go ahead and pick that. Now next up, pick wherever you want to install it. I install all of my tools for game programming and development uh, to the dev folder of my D drive. Uh, so obviously pick this wherever you want. It really doesn't matter. And go ahead and install it. As you can see, we're doing this in real time. I'm not going to pause the recording or anything because this really is a pretty quick install. And there we go. So Hacks is now installed. Click go ahead and finish. And realistically, that is it. Um, now we need to go ahead and configure uh, our actual libraries. But you now have the Hacks programming language on your machine. It's really that simple. Uh, that was a fresh install. Let me just open up a new window here. So what we're going to do is open up a command prompt window. Um, I would normally go, I've created a shortcut for doing it as, as administrator. You probably don't need to be an administrator, but it is useful. In order to run as administrator, just bring up a command prompt like so. All right, where are you? I need a normal command prompt, command prompt, but right click it and do a run as administrator. I've got a shortcut for doing that. You can see it right here. So now we've got our command prompt open. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, configure our libraries. Now, the cool thing is Hacks comes something called a package manager called Hackslib, and we're going to use it now. So it's Hackslib, like so. You can see the various results. If you don't get that screen, if you get unrecognized command or something along those lines, Hacks probably didn't install right. Now, if you're running an older version of Windows, like Windows 7 or earlier, you may also have to do a reboot before your path picks it up. Uh, as part of the installation process, the Hacks directories will have been added to your path uh, parameters. Uh, uh, but sometimes this actually requires a, a reinstall or possibly just closing down your terminal window or command prompt, depending on your language or your, your platform of choice, and starting it up again. So if you're not getting this screen, these error messages when you type Hackslib, um, either reboot your computer or close your terminal window and start a new one. Uh, but hopefully you don't have to. Uh, so once you've got this guy up, what we want to do is run the command Hackslib, and then we're going to install Flixel. Uh, so we're installing the Flixel library into our Hacks um, development environment. And this is going to go ahead and fetch it across the wire. This is fetching all of the dependency it has. So what you see here is it grabbed um, Flixel, and now it's grabbing a, pack a package called Lime. It's also going to grab a package called OpenFL. So while it's going ahead and downloading these, I'll explain what those are. Uh, Lime is a low-level cross-platform 2D library. If you've done any C++ or C programming, it's a lot like SFML or SDL. It's just a thinner layer over top of common low-level things like um, drawing graphics, um, um, getting input, that kind of stuff. And then Lime itself is used by a library called OpenFL. Now, OpenFL stands for Open Flash, or that's ultimately what the acronym was became. It used to be called NME, but OpenFL is 
an implementation of the various Flash APIs. So a lot of the initial um, love of OpenFL and uh, the Hacks programming language is a migration path for Flash developers. Now that Flash is sort of you know, being sunset a bit. The Flash player isn't as prevalent as it was. Well, OpenFL is basically their re-implementation of the Flash API. So if you're a Flash programmer, you're going to immediately love working in hacks. If you're not, don't worry. It's really got nothing to do with Flash other than the fact that Flash is one of the targets. But that's what those two libraries are. Basically, OpenFL and Lime work together to provide the low-level cross-platform gaming guts that uh, Hacks Flixel itself is built on top of. So now that those two packages are installed, uh, so HacksFlixel is now installed on this machine, uh, we're gonna go ahead and grab, run a command. What we wanna do is run hackslib run lime setup. This is gonna allow us to do some stuff from the command line, uh, add some tools for lime itself, um, allow us to do various different build targets. Um, so basically just consider this part of the configuration process. And it's gonna run for a few seconds and configure lime for us. And Lime, as I said earlier, was uh, installed as part of the dependencies of Flixel earlier on when we did this command. And by the way, if you're not following on these commands as I'm typing them here, don't worry. I've linked the text-based version of this tutorial down below in the comments. So you can get all of these commands on an easy reference um, screen. So if you're not following along real time, don't worry. Don't bother writing anything down. They're all available. Handy little link. Um, this is a pretty simple process. So don't, don't sweat it. Don't worry too much about keeping up here. There is a reference available. All right, so this should be done. Okay, it's, now it's finished. I'm gonna do another setup. Now, you don't actually have to do this one, but it gives us um, a piece that we really need. This is gonna give us some command line tools for working with Flixel. Uh, makes things a lot easier. So now we're gonna do a hackslib install Flixel tools. And that installed the tools for us, and now we're just gonna to wanna to set those up. So hackslib run Flixel tools setup. All right, now it's going to ask us a couple questions. Basically, do we want to create the Flixel command? Yes, we do. We're going to be using that quite a bit. Would you like to download the demos and templates? Um, sure, might as well. So this is a bunch of basically getting started helpful kind of templates to get you going. Um, we'll look at those in one second. So this is basically just downloading all those things off the web for us. And we are Almost done. All we really have left to do is to create our project. Now, uh, there's going to be a little bit more going on with this particular uh, this install. It's actually grabbing quite a bit across the wire for us. So let's give it a second to run. And it's going to ask us a couple more questions. Come on. All right, there we go. So now once it's actually finished configuring that, it's gonna ask you a couple questions. Now, what IDE or what editor are you going to use? Now, you don't have to actually answer this, just hit four, but what this will do is when you create your first project, it will automatically create the project setup for that particular editor and open that editor for you. What we're gonna use is Visual Studio Code. And somewhere down the road, I'm actually going to do another video showing you how to use Visual Studio Code as your editor uh, with Hacks and Hacks Flixel. So for this particular series, I'm going to be using Visual Studio code. I love Visual Studio Code. I think it's a great plot, cross-platform editor. And don't mix Visual Studio Code up with Visual Studio. Two completely different products. This is more of a lightweight um, flash editor, but this, or sorry, um, code editor, but it just happens to have great hacks support and hacks flexible support. So that's why I'm going with Visual Studio Code. But those other two options, Sublime Text and Flash Development, oh, sorry, there's three options, and IntelliJ, all have hacks environments available for them as well. But we're going to specifically focus on Visual Studio Code. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. So we just go ahead and say three. Uh, do I automatically wanna create in Visual Studio Code format? Yes, I do. And we are done. That is it, we are configured. I accidentally just put the wrong thing on the wrong screen. So now we are ready to go ahead and create our first project. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and use one of those templates we just looked at a minute ago, um, pretty simple. You just run the command Flixel. So this is that command we just installed a minute ago. And you want to go create. So run that. And what you see here is it's asking you which number to create. And here are the various different templates available for you. So if you wanted to learn about... Um, 
you know, here's a platform, a prod, a, a jumping kind of sample example. You just go ahead 65. Uh, here's an RPG interface example using an atlas. They've got some really cool examples already built in for you. Just type the number of the one you want and it will go ahead and create a project for you. Now, I don't actually want to do that right now. So I'm going to control C and it will exit out from where we want to be. So instead, what we're going to do now is create our first project. And we're going to do this again in the next tutorial. So um, you don't worry too much, but it's a nice way to finish off the thing to prove that uh, our installation did in fact work as we wanted it to. Now, first thing you want to do in whatever environment you're in is change to a temporary directory or a directory where you want to create your project. And now we're going to run a command to actually create a new project. And again, we're using the Flixel command. And if you just run Flixel, it will sit here and it'll tell you all the various different options available for it. But what we want to do is Flixel TPL, so template, new, dash N, and then your name. So we'll call this my first uh, hacks Flixel project. Like so, there could be spaces there. I'm just, I, I never put spaces. I've been burned enough times. So you'll see me rarely use spaces for a file name. And that's it. So what this will do is create a new folder for you called um, my first hacks Flixel project. We'll go back and look at it in a second. And as you see here, it's automatically opening it up in Visual Studio Code. So here we are. Here is the structure it has created for us. Right, let's see if I can easily zoom that in. All right, here we go. Let me just get that over on the recorded side of the screen. So here is Visual Studio Code and the project it created for us. You can see there's a number of different folders it's created for us. And in the source, it's created our entry point. So here is where your program starts. Now we're gonna jump into that in the next tutorial. So don't worry, we're at the point we wanna be. Our code is created, our code is running. And if you go back to uh, whatever directory you just created that in, so I did it in temp, you should see, ta-da, same thing. And it creates a project.xml file, which is usable from, you know, because I selected Visual Studio Code. It automatically created the appropriate see, folder structure here for the stuff we need, and it's configured for using that editor. If you picked a different editor, it would have created a different contents there. And if you picked none, it wouldn't have configured it for any editors at all. Uh, so that's it. We're up and going. We created our first application. We got our Hacks environment installed and configured. We got Flixel installed and configured. And uh, I think that's about where we're going to leave this off. As you can see, you can really get up and running with a Hacks project and a Hacks Flixel project fast. Now, you know, compare this to installing, say, Java or Visual Studio development suites, and you're talking an order of magnitude faster. All right, so stand to the next one. We are going to repeat that last part a little bit. We're going to look at creating our first application and jump into the code and look at how it's structured or what things mean. Hope you found that useful. If you did, please do click like. Uh, this is going to be the beginning of a very long, ongoing series, so uh, do click subscribe. And since we're very early on, at least if you're catching this as I'm publishing it, and there are specific things you want this series to cover, please do let me know in the comments down below and you can help shape how this series turns out. All right, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed that. See y'all later. Goodbye.